अनंत कूटी वरुष्ण वृंद की जय चाश्र दास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत दाधा शिव सदि गोर भक्त रिंद की जय महावीर भक्त रिंद की जय प्रेमानंद की ओर गौरी समिति हरे principle of punishment principles of punishment daitya indram daitya indram antu hiranya kashipu antu hiranya kashipu the king of the daityas the king, king of the daityas darshayam asa darshayam asa presented matrim rishtam matrim rishtam being bathed being bathed by his mother by his mother alamkritam alamkritam decorated Ornaments. Decorated Decorated ornaments. ornaments. Translation. After some time, the teachers Sanda and Amaka saw that Prabhupada Maharaj was sufficiently educated in the diplomatic affairs of pacifying the public leaders, appeasing them by giving them lucrative posts, dividing and ruling over them, and punishing them in cases of disobedience. Then, One day, after Prahlad's mother had personally washed the boy and dressed him nicely with sufficient ornaments, they presented him before his father. Purport by Śrīla Prabhupāda It is essential for a student who is going to be a ruler or a king to learn the four diplomatic principles. There is always rivalry between a king and his citizens. Therefore, when a citizen agitates the public against the king, the duty of the king is to call him and try to pacify him. with sweet words by saying you are very important in the state why should you disturb the public with some new cause for agitation if the citizen is not pacified the king should then offer him some lucrative post as a governor or minister any post that draws a high salary so that he may be agreeable if the enemy still goes on agitating the public the king should try to create a dissension in the enemy's camp But if he still continues, the king should employ argumentum ad baculum and severe punishment by putting him in jail or placing him before a firing squad. The teachers appointed by Hiranya Kashipu taught Prahlad Maharaj how to be a diplomat so that he could rule over the citizens very nicely. Srimāte Bhaktivedānta Svāma Kinam Nenamaste Sarasvāma Devam Gauravāna Prachāna Nirvishesha Śrīvāna Prashkāti Vītāna They were staying in the kitchen, but I think they were very nice. Huh? They were just a couple of over here, just saying they couldn't hear. Yeah. 
After some time, the teacher Sandhya Lamarca thought that Prague Maharaj was sufficiently educated in diplomatic affairs of pacifying public leaders, appeasing them by giving them lucrative posts, dividing and ruling over them, and punishing them in cases of disobedience. Then, one day, after Prahlad's mother had personally washed the boy and dressed him nicely with sufficient ornaments, they presented him before the him before his father. So this is a classical example of material education, uh, as we will soon find out, is uh, uh, completely ignored by a devotee. However, Prabhupada points out that if a devotee would find himself in a situation of a king or a ruler, uh, these things have to be taken into consideration. Therefore, Raja Rishi, this is a very, very special class of devotees who could manage both the material aspects of life and the spiritual priorities of life. So, uh, this is usually not the case. Politicians are most mundane people. Actually, Chanyaka Pandit puts them on the same level like prostitutes. Because prostitutes will tell you anything just to please your senses and gain, gain you know, and get to you money. The politicians do exactly the same. A good politician will find out what people want to hear. You know, it's a famous election campaigns, you know, Americans are perfectionists on that. You know, before you go for the president, you have to visit the kindergarten and you buy some toys. Then you visit the coal miners, you get the coal miner hat on. You know, then you visit the farmers, you get a spade or something like this, or you think, yes, boomy shoes. You just dress for the occasion, just to show them, I'm your man, vote for me. I will understand you, I will make you life better. You will do anything, just anything. It's like a prostitute, she will dress up just to attract the senses of the man, just to have him coming around, that's all, and get his money. So this is all part of the world we are living in. Everybody is more or less prostituting himself to some degree just to please the senses of others, especially in such a sensually based so-called culture we are living in. Whoever can please the senses of the people most, he will gain a dominant position. He will be. Therefore, let's not underestimate the Hollywood production line. This is all well thought through. And this is all psychologically prepared. How from the very, very small childhood, you know, they don't like even the old fairy tales, you know that. They re restructure them again, you know, yeah. But this time the evil queen is actually a very strong feministic woman. It's the same fairy tale, but they shape it around. And children think, oh, this is the new version, you know. And the women become in this fairy tale, it's not the humble, you know, uh, naive uh, princesses but ferocious, feministic, you know, is the American word for which I'm not going to use. So, you know, so uh, really dominant women who just, you know, sometimes have even two princes, maybe three. You know, why not? It's more fun. So you can guess what will be the next version of the same fairy tale. What will the queen do? You know? in a frame of eating, sleeping and sex life. We don't know. And this is small children stuff. And the children indebt it very quickly as reality. Yeah. Therefore the demons are extremely cautious, like in this case, about the educational system. Because they are absolutely convinced that uh, you can form people by educational system. <coughs> and certainly, to some degree, you can. But what they don't know, that actually the child is born with certain qualities, you don't create the qualities. You simply can shape them and deal with them. But the qualities are only given there right away at the point of birth. Therefore, anybody who is nowadays working in educational systems is desperate. You know, it's just desperate. Because they try to educate the children, but what you get is in plain terms, mostly, Vana Shankara. Children which come from the lowest part of the universe and take birth on this planet Earth and exhibit the most ferocious activities. 
They have no laws for this nowadays even. They are always trying to change the laws. Because there was no law what it means when an eight years old boy kills his grandmother and tries to eat her. Pfft, how do you deal with that legally? Didn't never, it didn't happen before. So they are shocked. Where is this type of behavior coming from? And then they analyze and the psycho, you know, the, the psychiatrists are busy and they try to trace it back. But as long as they don't understand that we are not this body and we are coming into these bodies with our consciousness from unknown regions and destinations. And there is a way how to prevent that. So from Garbhagana Samskara is such an important thing. You just don't have sex and then some child comes. But, oh, ooh, what happened? You know, no. This is a well-planned thing where the consciousness of the parents is possibly shaped to the best degree. You know, we have a system in Eskon, it should be actually, you know, 60 rounds, something like that. Now you try to have a really good sex life after chanting 60 rounds. Not a good combination actually. So it is a matter of consciousness and a matter of duty. You read Mahabharata, sometimes when the husband is important, king, and he is supposed to create a next generation of a king, uh, he cannot, his brother will be called upon to do his duty. Sometimes, some, you know, so the dynasty is precisely following according to the consciousness. Vedic society was in its pure form, so clear that you could be sure that Shudra is coming from a Shudra parent, Kshatriya is coming from Kshatriya parent, Brahmana is coming from Brahmana parent. So the original system of being of the birthright is correct. The proxim, you know, provided that the parents have a clear consciousness. Nowadays, no wonder that Prabhupada calls us a members of unknown caste. Because we were maybe produced, you know, under some hallucination of our parents by an open air festival in Roskilde. You know, you know how many pregnancies come out of that thing? And who is landing in Roskilde? What kind of what kind of beings? There must be a queue, there must be a rush hour of ghosts and hobgoblins who wants to be reincarnated in Denmark. Some make it. Some don't, because the mothers killed them right away in the womb. So, you know, so this is the situation. So, educational system is important, and education is aiming to establish rules. No, there is no need of education if the chaos is the rule. Okay, and then, then why, why to educate? Education means that according to the responsibility coming to that particular Varna, you know, uh, there is also education. There is a very great discrimination in the system of education. If you teach Shudra a Brahmanical knowledge, he gets puffed up and he ruins the whole thing. Therefore, nowadays we see there is a little problem. We are, for example, a movement which is supposed to disseminate knowledge, educate people, and educate ourselves. But we see there is a problem. Educating who? About what? The basic spiritual information can be given, but how to apply it in your life? Well, that's what Prabhupada said is part two. He said, that's, I didn't go to it yet, to the degree I wish to, but it's called the Vamashrama Society, where people are receiving spiritual information while simultaneously being properly placed. Because the major disease in Kali Yoga that pick, people pick up mental identities. They just hear something and they think, yeah, well, that's me. Several spiritual guidance is needed. They were Prabhupada born his disciples. Sometimes they inquired into spiritual spheres which they were not qualified for. Not yet. Prabhupada said, this is not for you. You know, this, this you don't require. That's the goal. You know, this you don't require. So even in a process of education, there should be some discipline, guidance on every step. Like a child, you know, it has to be educated from the beginning. The first thing is, don't slobber on the floor, wash your hands, you know, yeah, don't hit other children or whatever it's needed. But then it upgrades more and more. That's what it should be. So in Pralas, 
situation, of course, being the son of the biggest demon in the whole universe and universe is, uh, he was destined by the rule by to become a king. And as a matter of fact, later on he did become a king. There is a version of an old Maharaj who was a king. So obviously that knowledge was required. But being a devotee, actually we met quite a few people who were in a prominent positions and started to chant and actually were by nature devotees. <laughs> uh, they were miserable. <laughs> to be a politician devotee is a miserable combination. And usually they dropped the career. They just tuned out. Even, you know, once upon a time, Iskon had a political program run by, who was it? Oh, yeah, and Prince Farouk, and uh, was it Balabanta? Balabanta, that was, the, that was the man for the election. He ran an election in America. You know, there was pictures of Balabanta standing on a bus, you know, vote for Balabanta or vote for this, and Prabhupada supported it in the beginning. He said, yes, as we want to take over the government, why not? And then, you know, and then it started, and Americans, whatever they start, you know, it's kind of big times. So there was a big election campaign, you need money for that. And you need to lobbying, that's where it starts, you know, you have to collect friends and supporters. And it's all about advertisement, the whole thing. Balavant running around with a megaphone, and I had never heard his political speeches, but I thought it was pretty good. He got even quite some votes, quite some votes, for the fact. It was quite obvious this is a Hare Krishna party. So Prabhupada announced even in the newspapers, he said, no, no, we are also starting now American party, political party, the Hare Krishna party. You know, yeah, I think one, two years it died because of uh, the, the devotee finding himself incompatible with this, you know, uh, the same thing about business. Business is very similar, you know. So you, when you enter a certain realms of business, you find yourself surrounded by such a mundane people with such a heavy opportunistic policies. So as a devotee, you automatically get disgusted. You get awareness. You, you don't, you know. So Prabhupada Maharaj was actually very simple. He was disgusted right away from the beginning. Didn't even start it. Just didn't apply. Didn't even try it. He followed the ultimate policy of a devotee, because devotee should not be political. Devotee should not be double-sided. Devotee should be straightforward. This is one of the really foremost qualities of a devotee. That doesn't, he doesn't even hesitate to stand up for the truth, even in a time it may be not very suitable to do that. And it may not be. Of course, uh, he will do that, you know, uh, with the entire, entirely dependence on his spiritual master and the Guru Parampara. He is not voicing his opinion. As Prabhupada said very nicely, right away in the beginning, Prabhupada encountered that problem. Actually, he says it right away in one of the lectures in this yoga studio where he started to preach, where already then, amongst the Prabhupada's preaching, was, there was no iskon, there was nothing. So he was just kind of relating Bhagavad Gita you know, to this fat yoga ladies who were sitting there practicing yoga and, you know, and this. And, and Prabhupada was, you could say, quite mellow in comparison to what he preached later. Still, there was already on the base of Bhagavad Gita points of friction coming up. And then Prabhupada said this wonderful uh, sentence, personally, I would apply it in my life as a guideline. He said, ladies and gentlemen, excuse me, I am not criticizing, I am analyzing. Because in Kali Yuga, people are so stupid. As they hear some analysis, they take it immediately as an attack on the false ego. They need to get in defense position. But the devotee should not be actually criticizing, but that doesn't mean he should stop analyzing. My dear sir, you look like you could be considerably stupid because you exhibit the symptoms of stupidity. What are the symptoms of stupidity we can supply? You know, people go, Do you see I'm stupid? It doesn't matter what I think. <coughs> this is the verdict of the Shastra. And you comply with that description. Yes. Or when you deal with somebody like a very puffed up 
kings or really puffed up people. Narada Muni is retreating to analogies. Once upon a time, there was a king, not you, <laughs> son. He was living in a far distant kingdom. And he was doing so many stupid things. You know, and the king listens, oh, it's a nice story, yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, he must have been really stupid, isn't it? I know that they are stupid kings, I know. And then somewhere down the line, the king starts to understand. Maybe he's talking about me. So when you preach to Kshatriyas, you have to be careful because you can lose your head. It's as simple as that. When they disagree, they will express they, you know, their, their disagreement in probably quite violent way. <laughs> so to preach to Kshatriya is not funny. To preach to Kshudras, well, it's basically boring because when you try to make the point, they go, you may be right, but you know, it doesn't feel well. Why are you saying this to me? No, I'm depressed. I'm not a happy devotee. Make me happy. Give me some sex then. You know? That's Shudra. He always demands, you know, sen sensual and emotional inspiration. You love. Love first. Knowledge second. Uh, yeah, that's the Shudra policy. <laughs> Vaishas also very, very, you know, very compromised. They go, yes, sir, certainly, love, certainly, sir, no, no problem, sir, no problem. How much money do you have? Uh, can you buy something? Yeah, well, that's Vaisha, you know. He will put aside all the principles, everything. So therefore, the control has to be there. So this principle of appeasing somebody, you know, Prabhupada exhibited quite something on this, except you know, like the first part in preaching, it's amazing how Prabhupada could put sometimes somebody at ease to introduce a point. He did it in a most amazing, pure and charming way. This, this was, uh, somebody was trying to copy this later on, it was practically impossible how Prabhupada did that. He just, he just entered this association for a meeting like, ah, but it was not for everyone. There were people who just getting in contact with Prabhupada got instantly agitated. What is this? What is this? You mean like you have some kind of authority here? What are you talking about? What, 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 what is this? What? How can you dare? Prabhupada again smiled and he said, he is a demon. And the Buddhists were like, wow, we have a demon here. They didn't know this before because demons come in Kali Yuga really in a good package. So they were like, ah, that's amazing. People really flipped out such a people in presence of Prabhupada. Instantly. What? No sex life? What is this? You know. I want my sex life. It's like you want to take it away from them. Then it's okay. Have it. Great. Wish you good luck. You know. But they mean to start to defend themselves. That's the sinful class. But pious class, they are immediately attracted. So this is where the body goes, but regarding, um, you know, uh, lucrative posts, I'm well, sorry, we don't have it, nothing to offer. You want a lucrative post? Here in Scandinavia, I even forbade the devotees to call me temple president, because as soon as the word president come up, like in school programs, you know, I was introduced. Today, our temple president will speak to you. And he meets the students, President! <laughs> you know? <laughs> immediately made offenses, immediately. Because in Scandinavia, it's all social oneness, you know? No president. What a word. President of what? You mean that Bush or, you know, or Obama or what? We don't look like a kingdom, you know that? We don't look like a state even. We look like a bunch of, you know, uh, monks at best. Or quite disorganized crew at worst. This is the outlook, sorry. So they cannot identify these titles, they get very agitated. So I always tell them, just introduce me. This is the man who is actually, uh, who is cleaning up here or something like that. So main cleaner, you know. Then go, oh yeah, yeah. 
In America, it can get even worse. Even Americans have a strong strive for leadership. They want a strong leadership, but not to follow. <laughs> because they are also completely educated. This we are all one and the same Americans. It's just one guy is the pop star. Okay, good. You know, therefore the politicians in America are pretty like pop stars. They always told me this is not real people. They have advices how to dress and this and that and behave and, and people like good show. Hey Obama. And Mr. Obama goes in on the name of American nation. <coughs> and they go, right? You know. Hey, the beer. Nice. That's all show. The boys don't play such a show. They are very unsuitable for this kind of purposes. They don't like it. Because it's completely bodily inspired. The boys are even averse to the idea to be popular or successful. You know, attracting large crowds with some cheap talk. It's Kali Yuga. And offering lucrative posts, well, we don't have it, sorry. Whatever lucrative posts you seem to have in ISKCON, uh, it's front. When you speak to the devotee who has the lucrative post, usually they are quite distressed. <laughs> because the first thing you get as a reward for a lucrative post is envy. It's an amazing substance. Nobody wants it, nobody plans for it, and it's coming instantly, without any warning. To get angry, it takes a little while, maybe. Uh, you know, and to uh, but envy is instant, just like that. It's amazing, amazing quality. So uh, this is what you get in Kaliuga for having lucrative post. As Prabhupada said, it should draw a high salary. Really, well, how does that work amongst the devotees? Come on, we are all bankrupt people. <laughs> so. And then the next thing is, uh, the king should make dissension in enemy's camps. Prabhupada said, British are the best. In this art, the British politics the best. More even as the American politics, because British know it's a very eloquent way to cheat you in such a way. Prabhupada said, they have the best propaganda, you know. So, uh, what they did to India, and they occupied India, they dissented it, the whole thing. Divide and rule is the principle. That means they supported the already disintegrating Vedic culture, which was taking its shape in little kingdoms. India was just hundreds, if not thousands, of little kingdoms. So the British were going very good, very good. They were actually very supportive. I saw old film footage from Rajasthan where the British governor is uh, organizing huge festivals and parties for the Rajasthan king and kings. They march on elephants and this and that. And the British always present themselves as an assistant to the already existing country. Very interesting. Very good Vedic country, yes. But they studied it just to pervert it. And perversion, that's also dissension. You know, and then divide the kings and make them fight against each other. They went to one king and they were going, you know, this other king, he's not satisfied with his small kingdom. He would like to make it bigger. We heard that he said he will come over and take over your kingdom. What? What? How can he dare? You know, and so the kings start to fight and the, rule, the British kept over, you know, overview of the whole thing. They finish themselves on their own. And ultimately, people being not protected, confused and dissatisfied, very warmly embraced 